All right, hey guys, it's Miss Scott coming to you from somewhere in front of some sort of whiteboard. I don't know. Uh, this video is being made for my biology kids. I was asked if I could start making review videos like I do for my physical science kids. I said, sure, if you'll use them. So here we go. By request, this is the first thing we're doing. It's about pedigrees. Yay! All right. So what I want to do for this video to keep it short, we're going to talk about what a pedigree is and the symbols and sort of how to read it. And I'll make another video that will tell you how to determine patterns of inheritance in a separate in a separate film. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Pedigree. What is a pedigree? It is a visual. It is a picture. A visual chart showing basically how people are related, people or organisms, anything. It shows us how they're related and their traits. So a person who has cystic fibrosis in their, that runs in their family, you know, they have four brothers and sisters, and mom and dad, and grandma and grandpa, and so many people had cystic fibrosis and so many didn't. What do we use it for? So there's a bunch of different reasons you would use a pedigree, depending on what you need it for. Um, if you've ever heard of it, you've probably heard about pedigrees when you're talking about... Um, animal shows, if you've ever seen like a dog show or a cat show or a horse show or whatever. A pedigree is that, fam that animal's family history. It says that its parents were also, you know, these were its parents and these were its parents' parents. And that proves to you that, you know, it's a purebred or it's not a purebred. It just kind of tells you what it is, how it got there. What we're going to use it for, use to We are going to use it to look at human genetic disorders. So you see how genetic disorders are inherited. You know, typically we think of a disorder as being something that's hidden. You know, you have a mom and a dad who don't know they have an allele for something, and then they have a kid who's sick or something. Not every disorder is transmitted like that. It's not that simple. So we want to know how do they get inherited because that will help us predict It will predict the chances of an offspring having a disorder. So I want to know, do I run the risk, do I run a 50% risk of having a child that will have a potentially fatal disorder or a 25% chance? That's going to make a difference to me. Okay. So we'll start with the um, kind of basis of it, the symbols. I'm not going to go into every single symbol there ever was on a pedigree because that's too much. The shapes that you're going to see on a pedigree are these. These are the only two you're going to see. You have a circle, which is female, and a square, which is male. It will always be like that. That's the nice thing about pedigrees is they're all uniform. They're all universal. There's very little variation on how I can draw these, so if I give it to somebody who doesn't speak the same language, it will say the same thing to them. All right. If you have a... Shape. So the shape is the same, but I can change what I put in the shape. So this is a circle and a square that's shaded in. And this means that they are affected. What affected means is that they show the trait. So they show it in their phenotype. So I have hitchhiker's thumb, like a lot of people do. It's a dominant trait. If I were to make a pedigree of hitchhiker's thumb running through my family, I would shade myself in. I would be a circle and I would shade myself in. All right. The other kind of shape you're going to see, or the variations on that, are one that's half shaded in. And again, depending on what trait you're talking about, you might only have one kind. You might have only circles being filled in. You won't have I can't think of any disease that would have only male carriers. I don't think those exist. They wouldn't. This means, oh, and I just spoiled it. They are carriers. Remember carriers, biology kids? Carriers are the same thing as heterozygous. So this is a trait that's recessive. And this just means that, and that is not the right letter, excuse me. 
So this would be an example of their genotype. They have the recessive, they carry that recessive with them, but they don't show it. They have one dominant and that's what shows through. Okay? The only other variation I've seen on these are a circle and a square that are like mostly not filled in, where they have like a little dot in the middle of them. And I've seen that indicated as carriers on some keys. It's the same idea where you have you have the carrier, you have the recessive allele, but you don't show it. Okay. Only other symbols I would want you to know. Here are fraternal twins. This would be originating from the same sibling line. I didn't talk about that last week. But it's just, instead of a line going straight down, like we were usually write on a pedigree, they're kind of off to diagonal and there's two individuals. This means they're fraternal twins. Fraternal means they're no more similar than any other brother or sister set. They just happen to be born at the same time. So you could treat them as individual siblings. The one that I would want you to know it just has huge genetic implications or where there's a little line in the middle of them. So we have twins. This line means they are identical twins. And why that's helpful for us is because we can use a pedigree to look at traits that we're not sure if they're genetic or not. So if we think, if we hypothesize something is genetic and we look through a family and we know they have identical twins, if one twin has a trait, the other one should have the trait as well because they're essentially the same person genetically. They are the same person genetically. They're clones of one another. So what effects one should affect the other if it's genetic? All right. One more trait and we will do a little bit of practice. So here is we have a female and a male connected by a line in the middle of them. That is traditionally called a marriage line. It just means two people have offspring together. Not necessarily that they are joined in legal marriage of any sort. But for biology, it just means they made offspring. From a marriage line, you would have this a second line. This is a new generation. Everybody connected by this line are siblings to one another. And we read these from left to right with regards to age. So, so there's the first three eighths of my family. So if we read, this would be the oldest child, a daughter, the second oldest child, another daughter, and the youngest year would be a son. And that's, that's just how you read that. You will see Roman numerals placed on pedigrees that line up with each kind of level, if you will. And that just denotes generation. And you can number people so you can identify, you can name people essentially. So in this person, this son right here, you would address him in a problem as Roman numeral two individual three and that would tell your person who's reading it to go to this person instead of somebody else all right so if you have questions about how to read a pedigree or practicing you can look online for further resources or comments and i will get back to you as soon as i can if you want to know more information uh, please check back i'll have another video up soon with the patterns of inheritance using a pedigree